Welcome to Mission Sunlight. Join us as we explore the territory of what was formerly known as the Euro-Africa Division. In 2012, the division's territory in Africa was aligned with the newly created Greater Middle East Union. With the reorganization, the Euro-Africa Division was renamed. Today, it is known as the Inter-European Division. The countries in this territory are Andorra, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Germany, Liechtenstein, Malta, Portugal, San Marino, and Slovakia, to name just a few. Some of the most secular populations in the world are found within the borders of the inter-European division. As Christians, our mission to share the love of Jesus doesn't end just because society is secular. In fact, we should feel a greater urgency to seek methods that will attract people's attention to God's message. We are here in a great territory, more than 350 inhabitants and a very small church, less than 180,000 church members. And if we look to all Europe, we have 850 million of inhabitants and less than 300,000 Adventists. And they think Europe today is the first mission field for the church. It is a very secularized society. They think they don't need God, but they have a need of God. Not only does the church face the challenge of secularism in this region, the diverse populations also add the need to tell the story of Jesus in different languages. But we believe that the Lord is at work and that, uh, well, we just have to accomplish our task, be, be happy, be confident how the Lord will lead things and that, uh, well, the work will be done and we will be preaching our, in our uh, division to all people or all folks and uh, all tongues. It has long been known that the most effective way to bring someone to Christ is to build a relationship with him or her on a personal basis. As the friendship grows, it is natural to introduce Jesus. This approach is one of the methods that is being used throughout the inter-European division. The main activity we are realizing now are working to develop the concept of discipleship, to envision the member that they have the bigger task where they live with their relative, friend, neighbor. So we are working on that, even with project, global mission project, led by small group of church member, youth more, more, more than any other. The Adventist youth of the region are excited about their God and are eager to tell others about Him. In several countries we have project, small project, led by youth. In Italy, in Czechoslovakia Union, in Romania, many young people in Romania, in Bulgaria too. In Spain, there is a big group named Connected. It's a group of young people that go from city to city, walking the public square, meeting people on the street, hugging people on the road, and telling them that Jesus loved them. The outreach by youth isn't limited to Italy, Czech Republic, Romania, Bulgaria, or Spain. A unique program has taken hold in several other countries. In France, we have a good number of young people working with Health Expo program. Health Expo program is something that helps people to get confidence in our activity. We start with that project in France, in Spain, in Portugal, in Italy, now in Switzerland with a youth Health Expo program and children Health Expo program. Technology also plays an important role in the ministry of lay people. Teaching healthier living alongside other doctrine has led to exciting results. In uh, Romania, in Germany, and in Portugal, we have three wonderful services with TV, TV project. And in Portugal last year, more than 300 families were involved with a TV program from the, from the studio, they send programs through internet and through the satellite, and in 300 families, they were downloading the program and meeting people at home. And more than 1,500 people start receiving Bible study. In Germany, we had the same problem, the same program. 
with a less participation than Portugal, but a very good impact too. Among young people, a great impact. Throughout the division, youth are eagerly involved in ministry. In Austria, we are working for uh, establishing activity for youth people in the, in the street. They are working with, uh, with MIMOS, the statue of Daniel II in the public square. They put a big statue of three meters and they invite people to discuss about that. In South Germany, there are a lot of people, young people, that are preparing themselves to go in a place where there is not the church to plant interest for the gospel. This is the big activity we are working. Of course, in Germany, there are other activities, uh, like the TV. The Inter-European Division has chosen three projects for the 13th Sabbath mission offering this quarter, reflecting the diversity and need here. So with the 30th, 30th uh, Sabbath uh, offerings, we have uh, three projects also to present to you. Uh, the first one is uh, in the Czech Republic. Another project also with the 30th Sabbath is also in Portugal. The last one also linked to the 30th Sabbath is uh, the project we have in Bulgaria to, to build a Rome center. Former communist regimes took a spiritual toll on the people who lived in many of these countries. Atheism is one of the hurdles that must be overcome as church members share Jesus with their friends and neighbors. Uh, Czech Republic is a beautiful uh, country with very nice people, but uh, Czech Republic is also a very atheistic country. This is probably, uh, well, it is rated as the most atheistic country, at least in our division. Therefore, it is uh, quite challenging and uh, we want to have that special project and work with the students in universities. And our young people are thrilled about uh, starting that new project and working and being close to their peers and work uh, in uh, this university in Prague and probably in other places. But this will, be, uh, this will take place in the Czech Republic. Because of a lack of interest among the general population in public evangelism, lay members are instituting other methods of evangelism. We mentioned that we are Christian, they say, oh stop, we don't know, to know nothing about it. That's all. So we try to find many ways how to reach them. And it seems that there is no way to make, for example, the public evangelism. It's possible there is a liberty to do it, but people, they are not interested in it. We can invite them, but almost nobody will come. So we try to reach them by the personal contact. Inri Road is a secular campus ministry led by students and their sponsors in the public universities of the Czech Republic near Olomouc, Brno and Prague. Adventist young adults involved in Inri Road are moved to action for their friends rather than becoming complacent in their college years. And I think that the, those activities of Inri Road is something very personal because it's uh, first of all focused on uh, young Adventists, but then they are trained how to reach their friends at the university, at school. And I think it's a very good way how to reach those people, because they can invite them. And we have special students worship even in this building here and everywhere we can do it. And we can see it's working. And some of their friends, they are coming, they are interested, they start to listen their personal experiences. And I think that's one of the way we can use today. And I think that even if we are not students, uh, we can be inspired by this model of very personal uh, sharing of our faith. Immigrant populations throughout Europe are growing. As a worldwide church, we must not overlook these people groups. Creating ways for them to study the Bible and grow in faith builds communities where spiritual growth can occur. One of the projects this quarter addresses this need in the country of Portugal. We have good and large communities also with Africans. They try to mingle with Portuguese and this will be also a way to create a center for Portuguese African people in order also to gather together, to praise together, to pray together 
and of course discover the Bible and what God has in store for his people there. So it is an intercultural action and project. Acima de tudo, acima de tudo. Above all, what made us choose this project has to do with the number of children in this community. And we believe we should create these conditions so these children can grow and learn what they need to learn in order to be good citizens. The Portuguese Union knows that if they have a good place where they can meet, this can help children to grow and build character. We want these children to grow in harmony, including their physical, mental and spiritual dimensions. This will help them build the character that will allow them to live through eternity. In the country of Bulgaria, the Roma population is one of the largest ethnic minorities. This people group is often known as gypsies. Called by many Bulgaria's unwanted, the Roma are discriminated against and treated with disrespect. For the Adventist Church in Bulgaria, the Roma people are children of God, just like anyone else. We have in Bulgaria to, to build a, a Rome center, meaning a place for the gypsies, and especially where they can not only discover the Bible, but maybe and also learn how to read, how to write. So this is a very challenging uh, project. Uh, here we face, I can say, the poorest people we have in, in our division in Europe and in this country, Bulgaria. It is very uh, important that we support with, with our hearts also that, that great project and uh, that it will help the people to benefit from your gifts, from your offerings. And, uh, uh, I really thank you in a special way for, for this project that uh, you will greatly be blessed and also that these people will greatly be blessed in Bulgaria, so for the gypsies, for the children and also for their parents. Recently, the Inter-European Division held a major conference on mission and evangelism. We had 400 people, lay members, administrators, pastors, gathering together from different countries in Europe. It was in the place uh, a uh, very well-known place, uh, the Valdensians Valleys. And there it was also a thrilling, a very beautiful and nice experience to gather with so many people, young people, elderly people, all involved and all willing to preach and to, to grasp the importance of the gospel and also new ideas, new, new ways, but uh, maybe above all, a, confident, a confidence that God will also help them and that he will uh, support these actions and convince the people that they can go. They don't have to be ashamed that they, they, have, they have the best reason to go and speak to the people around them. I'm sure that the church as a worldwide family will be sensitive for our need and we will thank you in advance for what you will be do you will do for that what gift will you give in the 13th sabbath mission offering that will be taken on sabbath september 28 there are so many needs and yet will you deny a college student a young child or an immigrant in a foreign country the opportunity to learn about a savior who loves them more than he loved his own life reporting from the new inter-european division this is mission sunlight